Today I'm going to talk about our van's 3-in-1 heating system which can actually get powered by our van's engine waste heat while we're driving. Meet our hydronic heating system by Rickson Enterprises which heats our air, our water, and our floors. I know you're probably thinking that this thing is pretty complex but it's easier than you think once you understand it and I'll hopefully simplify that for you in this video. However, before we get into the deep dive, let me explain why we went with this system and why I think it's arguably the best for van life. If you're new to our channel, this is our second van build and on our first van, we had an S-Bar diesel heater underneath the passenger seat in the van. This setup actually worked really well for our van when we snowboarded all over North America, but it only heats your air. In order to heat our water, we use a two and a half gallon electric hot water heater that ran off 120 volts, so it sucked up a ton of energy. The plus side, it did add a little bit capacity to our water supply, our water storage, but we had to be really proactive on when we wanted to use it because of that energy draw when we had to turn it on and heat it up. Also, when we showered, we had to be super conservative with the hot water because we only had two and a half gallons if we wanted to shower within a short period of time. Otherwise, we had to heat that water twice for two people to shower. And this is our shower that's not done yet. And we had no way to heat our floors in the last van, which got really, really cold in the winter. With our new system, everything is managed in one place since it's a three-in-one able to heat our floors, our air, and our water. And the water heat is actually on demand so we can take endless hot water showers even though realistically we want to do that because we need to conserve water when we're traveling in remote places. Okay so I came inside in hopes to simplify the hydronic heating system which I have my handy dandy whiteboard here to do it. So it's basically made out of two main components that make up the whole system. Coolant which is antifreeze like what you put in your car and heat exchangers. This right here is an example of how your engine heats your car. Basically, it's using antifreeze, and what it, antifreeze is meant to do is to cool off your engine, right? So when coolant runs through your engine, the cool coolant becomes hot, and then your car uses that hot, wasted heat from the engine, excess heat from the engine, and runs it through an air blower, which is like your heater core, and there's a fan that pumps that exchanged heat into your car vents. And then it runs back through into your radiator and the cycle continues. So that's how your car heat works. So in our van, we have a coolant reservoir just for our heating system. And then we have a furnace that heats up this coolant like an engine would in your car and it sends it onto the reservoir which is insulated and it can maintain heat for a little bit and then sends it into a heat exchanger and then we also have an air blower as well that I didn't document which I'll show you in it but I just wanted to explain how the system works basically there's a furnace that heats up the coolant and sends it up into the coolant reservoir and then that goes to heat exchangers to heat our water and so on so it's relatively simple when you think of it like this. It looks more complex in the van because there's pumps to move that coolant around, but it's really not that bad. So we got the simple overview completed. We have a rough idea of how it works. Now I wanna to explain to you how heat exchangers work, and that's also relatively simple. So here's what it looks like. It's basically a series of metal plates and two channels within that plate. One would be for the coolant loop, and then the other one would be for your water line, or if you're connecting to your engine, one would be to the engine's coolant loop, and then the other one would be to the coolant loop of the heating system. So the, the channels within the aluminum plates run in, in parallel next to each other, but they go in opposite directions. So if your hot coolant is going from top to bottom, then your water would go from bottom to top. And as they cross, they'll exchange that heat and your water will become hotter and so on. Okay, back to the whiteboard. Now that we know how heat exchangers work, here is the detailed overview. And yes, it might be intimidating, but it really isn't bad. Bear with me and I'll explain this. So here we have our heating system in the van. This is the back of the van. And then we have the front engine of our van, the actual vehicle's engine. This red line here is the floor of the van, and I didn't give enough space for our heated floors. So imagine this red line being 
about an inch thick and our heated floor is going through that. So in terms of coolant loops, there's three coolant loops. One is for our hot water and our hot air. So you can see here, here's the coolant reservoir. We have the coolant loop that's going up to our heat exchanger for our hot water, going down to the air blower for our hot air, and then back to the furnace and up into the coolant reservoir. That's one loop. Second loop is for our floors. This is from the coolant reservoir down to the red line, which again, that's our van floor, remember that? And then back up and into the coolant reservoir. That's the second loop. The third loop is the engine coolant loop, which we tap into right off the heater core. So again, here's our engine. It's sucking coolant from the radiator into the engine. The engine creates heat and the lines are now hot. Those hot lines run through the engine vehicle's heater core, which heats the van. And then we connect right after that and take that line all the way to the back of the van to a heat exchanger and then back up to the vehicle's radiator. So this is pretty much the entire system. Now these purple things here is a pump. So that's how we are able to circulate our coolant through our lines, both for the floor and for our coolant loop for the hot water heat exchanger as well as the hot air heat exchanger. So you can see we're able to heat our coolant, which once our coolant is hot, then we have hot air, hot water, hot floors. The key to the system is heating up the coolant. So the first way to do that is to just turn the furnace on. And the furnace is just like the S-Bar diesel heater. It sucks in diesel from the vehicle's diesel tank and then it creates heat. And as the coolant runs through the furnace, the coolant gets hot. So that's one method. The second method is through the electrical element, heating element that's in the coolant reservoir. So if we're connected to shore power, it's a pretty big draw. We can heat up our coolant via electricity, which is nice because when we were in Vermont in our last van, our fuel line is frozen. It is officially too cold for van life. It was like super, super cold, like negative 22 degrees or something. And our diesel actually froze. So the heater, couldn't suck any diesel to burn because that diesel got slushy really, really thick and it wasn't able to suck that up. So if that happened again and we were parked at a buddy's house or something where we can get an extension cord to the van, then we can maintain that heat via this electrical heating element in the coolant reservoir. So I'm super stoked on that one. This is like a backup emergency use case here. And then the third way to heat is via the engine. So when the engine's running, we're taking that hot excess heat from here all the way to the back of the van where the heat exchanger is. And then we have our coolant loop exchanging that heat going in opposite directions in the heat exchanger going through. So this is it. I hope that kind of helped. I don't know, but let's go into the van and I'll show you it in a real world use case and show you how I put everything together. So again, this setup is by Rickson Enterprises and we were able to get a bit of a discount in exchange for some content, but I would highly recommend them. Their customer service is top notch and they arguably have the latest innovative technology for these style systems. This was actually in the Storyteller Overland van, which we had the opportunity to test out for a week over in Oregon and I absolutely just fell in love with it. But here it is, here's our coolant tank, which or our coolant reservoir, and this is the electrical heating element. But you can see our two main loops here, which is the first one comes right from the coolant system into the heat exchanger, down to our air blower, which has the fan to heat our air and send that air via some ducts that I need to run. Then down to the furnace and back up this main line right here. On this side, we have the loop for the floor and there's a mixer valve just to control the temperature of the floor, make sure it's not too hot, not too cold. So that just goes down into the floor and then back up into the reservoir. Coming underneath the van, I'll show you where the furnace is as well as the loop to the engine. So our system works when we're driving the car as well. Here is the furnace. Again, this is the S-Bar diesel hydronic heating furnace. So it's basically very similar to your S-Bar diesel heater. You have your exhaust hose, you have your air intake hose, which looks right here. And then you have your diesel fuel line that connects to the diesel tank 
and just your electrical wires, your electrical harness. Here is the heat exchanger from the engine coolant loop. So these two lines are from the engine and then these two lines are just that loop that I already showed you that heats our water and our air. I'll show you how I ran the hoses right now all the way to the front of the van which is basically just a mixture of zip ties and these insulated brackets that tend to work pretty good. Start from the back of the van all the way down. Basically I just follow the drive shaft and I'll show you where I enter into the engine bay. You guys can just come with me. Do yourself a favor and get a creeper. This thing, this rolly thing's a creeper by the way. So you're gonna have my point of view here. So there's the back of the engine. Coming around. And now we're going up to the front of the van. So the one just runs in parallel. Every time I put this kid down, he just wakes right back up. Oh no. Literally, I was just up there for how long? His eyes are wide open. Two hours. How's it going? It's a little bit of a dry, boring, educational video. Not too entertaining, but it's very informative, I think. It's good. People need to know. Yeah. So I wrapped it over the transfer case into the engine bay. It gets super tight over here, so I'm not sure how uh, how lucky we'll get with showing this. But, let's see. Right there is the hose above the transfer case. So I connected it to this brake line on the back wall, the firewall. And then in the engine bay, I ran it up along the driver's side, zip tied it to an AC line, and then under the air filter, right by the heater core. So here it is. Those two brass fittings that you saw coming out of the heater core is where I made the connections. And I actually took the air filter off since it was more accessible. But that's basically it. It really wasn't that bad connecting to the engine. All you have to do is just tap into that coolant line. There's no additional wires or anything like that. In terms of wiring and how many different pumps and systems there are within this, it's really, really easy. Rickson's has this power box, which is a one-stop shop for all your electrical connections. And to power that, you just need a 10 gauge wire running from your battery bank to the actual power box system. Then you have all of your clamp connections for the water pumps, the air blowers, and the other little electrical components that connect to the power box and then there's two connections on the right side one is for the display head unit and then the other one is for the s-bar furnace that's right underneath the van and then lastly you, i haven't wired it up yet but you connect a hot wire to the engine's battery as a backup fail safe if your battery bank is completely depleted the system will connect to the chassis battery just to disconnect and turn down safely and then you also need an electrical wire to the heating element of the coolant so the 110 or 120 volt uh, wire that's going to that rickson also has a lot of wiring diagrams that make the install super easy so I don't need to do that for you. You can just follow along with their instructional guides. I'm really stoked on our electrical dashboard right in here. This is the Rickson's display head unit, which is a nice touch screen, super convenient for all of the modules. You can manage everything all in one place. So you have your electrical to heat it via the electrical heating element, the engine or the furnace. I can control whether or not I want my floors to be on or if I want on-demand hot water. So if I select hot water and then select which method I want to heat the coolant, then I'll have hot water all the time and it'll just basically maintain a hot coolant in the coolant reservoir. And I also have the ability for a preheating option. If I want to turn that on, then I could use my system to preheat the coolant lines. And it also gives you a little indicator of how hot your coolant is. So blue is cold, yellow is getting warm, and then hot is red, obviously. So that wraps it up for this heating system. Let me know what you guys think. Is it the best heating system for van life? Like I think, I don't know, I might be a little biased, but 
it's freaking awesome. I love how it's all in one. I know it's a bit expensive, but the simplicity of it and the ability to manage everything in one place is just top notch. So let me know if you guys have any questions. I know this video was a bit dry in terms of more on the informative side than entertaining, but if you have any questions, maybe I'll try and create some more like short videos to answer those questions and help you guys out. But uh, yeah, more van build episodes to continue. We gotta get this done by August 1st. Thanks everybody, peace.